Hello, second graders. I hope you guys are all doing well. Um, for those of you who are not in my class, I'm Miss Stays, and I'm going to be teaching you guys um, some math over the next few weeks. So um, today what we're going to focus on is we're going to review doing some addition with regrouping. Okay, so first we're going to start by remembering exactly what that looks like, and then we're going to read a story that's going to ask us to do some addition. Um, and so I'm going to have you guys try and solve some addition problems from here. So before we do the story, let's review how do we regroup when we're adding. Okay, so I started by adding some steps here. Addition with regrouping. The first thing that you want to do is you always want to start in your ones place. So you always add your ones place first. That way, if when you're adding your ones place, if that number makes a number that's greater than 10, it means we need to move our 10 into our tens place um, before we can add our tens place. Then the second step is to add up all of the numbers in the tens place. If you have a number that needs to be moved to the hundreds place, we move it over there. And then our last step is to add the hundreds place. So let's do a little bit of practice now um, and see exactly what that looks like. All right, so our first problem is 48 plus 35. My first thing I said to do was to add our ones place. So eight plus five. I like to start with my big number and I'm gonna count on five more. Eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. I'm gonna think about that number in terms of base 10 blocks, right? So if I have eight base 10 blocks here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and I have five here, when I put them together, we make 13. But 13 is the same thing as trading in 10 of the ones for a 10, and then I still have my three ones left over, 13. So what I need to do is I need to make sure my 10 that I just added makes it into the tens place. Okay, I still have my number that's in the ones place or those three left over base 10 blocks. And so that becomes the answer for my ones place. All right, now I'm ready to add my tens place. I have four plus three, four, five, six, seven. Ooh, don't forget the one more that we added, eight. So our answer would be 83. All right, let's take a look at this next one. Oops, sorry. We've got Nine plus nine starting in our ones place. Ooh, that's a double fact. So I know nine plus nine is 18. Okay, the number 18, does that have something in our tens place? It sure does. So that needs to go join the tens column. And then my answer in my ones place comes down. Now I'm ready to add that tens column. Five plus two is seven. Don't forget that one more. 88. Are you ready to make this a little bit trickier? All right. Now we have some three digit numbers. So again, we're going to go step by step and we're going to start with our ones place. Six plus seven. Six plus six is 12. Seven is one more. Oh, it must be 13 again. Okay. 13 has a number in the tens place. I bring my three down. Hmm. Now I have two plus four, six plus one more. Don't forget that one. Now I'm ready for my hundreds place. Three plus one, 473. Let's do one more together and then we're gonna get to our book where you're gonna have a chance to do some adding. All right. Starting again with our ones place, five plus five, that's a doubles fact, 10. Okay, bring my one up to my tens place and I bring my zero down. Six plus six is 12, one more is 13. Uh oh, we have another number that's two digits. Well, if I think about this, this is six tens plus six tens plus one ten, so it's 13 tens, which means this one is really a hundred. So I'm gonna bring my hundred over to my hundreds place, and then I can use this three for my answer. Last step, four plus one is five, plus one more 
is 6. 630. Okay, we are going to read a story called A Collection for Kate. And in this story, it's going to ask us to do some adding. So what I want you to do is when we get to these addition problems, I'm going to stop for a second. I'm going to write it down on a chart. And I want you to pause the video and add those numbers. And then we'll see if we all got those same answers. Okay? All right. A collection for Kate. Kate slumped in her seat. She frowned. Her teacher was giving the class one last reminder. Next week is collection week. If you signed up to share your collection, be sure to bring it on the right day. Kate peeked at the calendar with one eye. She had signed up for Thursday. The problem was, was that she didn't have a collection and she had less than a week to get one. Oh, brother, she muttered under her breath. Sign up day had been weeks ago. Lots of kids had rushed to put their names on the calendar, so Kate did too. It had seemed like she would have plenty of time to get a collection. Not anymore. Kate spent most of the weekend looking for a collection. She looked through her closet, her drawers, and her junk box. She looked on top of her bookshelf. She looked under her bed. Kate had a little of this and she had a little of that, but she didn't have a lot of anything. How many of something did she need to make a collection? She decided to wait and see what the other kids would bring. On Monday morning, Joseph showed his collection first. He had two tote bags full of books. He could hardly carry them all. I collected books about reptiles, he said. First, he showed nine books about snakes. Then he showed five books about lizards. Kate added them up in her head. Oh, brother, she th thought. All right, he's got nine books about snakes. And five books about lizards. Add that up. Go ahead and pause your video and let's see what you get. Oh, brother, she thought, I don't have 14 of anything. Did you get 14? Next came Emma. She could hardly wait to show her collection. She had collected two kinds of magnets. She had 13 animal magnets, including a giraffe and a zebra, and she had 11 food magnets, magnets including a pizza slice and a cookie. The cookie looked good enough to eat. Kate wrote down the 13 and the 11. Now she had to add two digit numbers. Ready? She already knew this was going to be a big sum. Go ahead and add 13 plus 11. Kate moaned. I definitely don't have 24 of anything. Did you get 24? That night, Kate searched the house. She found a little of this, four old books about horses. She found a little of that, five magnets on the refrigerator, but she didn't find a lot of anything. On Tuesday, Ben shared his shell collection. He had three full boxes of seashells. The first box held 15 shells from a trip to Florida. The second box held 10 shells from a trip to California. And the third box held five shells from his grandmother in Hawaii. Go ahead, 15 plus 10 plus five. Ben showed all the different kinds of shells. Meanwhile, Kate quickly added the numbers in her head. They were easy to add for Kate. She did 15 plus 10, which equals 25. And then she added five more to make 30. Thirty. The collections keep getting bigger. 
and so did Kate's problem. Sure, she had a few seashells, but six shells was not enough for a collection. Joan was next, and she was always such a show-off, thought Kate. But she only has one box, so maybe... My family took a long trip last summer, Joan began. I bought postcards at all the places we visited. We visited lots of places, so I have lots of postcards in my collection. <coughs> Joan counted the postcards. Kate thought she would never stop counting. Joan had 11 postcards from Colorado, 13 from New Mexico, and 15 from Arizona. Kate wrote down the numbers. Hmm, each of these numbers is bigger than 10, she thought. So the sum must be bigger than 30. Go ahead and add them up. 39, Kate gulped. Ooh. Oh, brother, was all she could say. 5 plus 3 is 8, plus 1 more is 9, 1 plus 1 is 2. One more is three. Did you get 39 too? That night, Kate found two old postcards in a drawer. She found one in between the sofa cushions and dad gave her one that had come in the mail. Four postcards, big deal. Then Kate put her six seashells in a box, a small box. Oh brother, Kate muttered. On Wednesday, Rachel shared her pig collection. It was huge. Her mom had to help her carry the six shoe boxes filled with pigs. The boxes held 10 wood pigs, 12 glass pigs, 16 metal pigs, four plastic pigs, and seven plush pigs. Everyone said, wow, Rachel beamed, but Kate did not. Are you ready? sure we line those numbers up. Kate fussed and fumed. Rachel had so many pigs. Kate had to regroup to find the sum. She stared at the number. Can that be right? She wondered. It was such a big number. Maybe she had made a mistake. I'd better check the sum on my calculator. Go ahead and add your numbers. All right, that was a big number and we had to do some regrouping here too. So when we started in our ones place, something that helped me out here is I know six plus four is a tens fact. When I add seven more, I get 17 and two more, 18, 19. Ooh, that has a number in the tens place and my nine goes down. One, two, three, four. Did you get 49? There it was, 49. I feel sick, she groaned. I might not be able to come to school tomorrow. That night, Kate looked at all the stuff she'd found. She had a little of this, she had a little of that, but she didn't have a lot of anything. Kate arranged all the little groups on her bed. She had four books about horses. She had five magnets, six shells, four postcards. She had no pigs, but she did have three frogs and five teddy bears. Slowly, Kate began to smile. Aha, that's it, she thought. Then she quickly packed up everything on the bed. At school the next day, Kate set out all her things. Everyone watched and no one said a word. Finally, her teacher spoke. Hmm, what is that you collected, Kate? She asked. Kate smiled proudly. I collect collections, she said. Cool, what a great idea, said the kids. Very nice, Kate, said her teacher. I suppose you didn't want to collect just one thing. Exactly, said Kate. For me, that just didn't add up. Okay, let's go back and see all the things. So Kate had, oh boy, she had four books, five magnets, six postcards, four shells, three frogs, and five teddy bears.
Go ahead, take a second and do that math. I'm gonna do it too, because it didn't give us the answer in the book this time. All right, this is how I solved this problem in my head, kind of. I know six and four is 10. I also know five and five is 10. Ooh, 10 plus 10 is 20. So now I have 20. I also know four plus four, oh, we already used that four, sorry. Four plus three is seven. So 20 and seven, when we put those together, we get 27. All right, how'd you guys do? For more practice, we've sent home some addition worksheets. There's also a fix it worksheet. So there's one, a few problems that are wrong and you guys have to figure out how to fix those and correct them, okay? If you need some help, go back in the video to when we were practicing all together or email your teacher. All right, have a great day.